Um, and we begin with roll call. Um, Mark Sargent? Here. Claire Price? Here. Barth Rana? Here. Tim Lim? Here. Adam Kugler? Here. Richard Ajani? Here. Kaylee Hines? Here. Rachel Convoy? Here. Tim Alvarez is here. Uh, Justin Clark? Romo Romano? Here. Eliza Conrad? Here. Katie Bluen? Here. Andy Fowler? Here. Uh, Stephen Clink? Here. Uh, Erica Leshik Cone? Oh, that one. Gotcha. Uh, Colin Ng? Mm -hmm. Natalie Vieira? Yeah. Uh, Bethany Brown? Yeah. Nicole Chow? Yeah. Ron Sassanoff? Yeah. Uh, Mika Fiedler? Yeah. Mika, sorry. Uh, Domenic Gagano? Yeah. Mm, not anymore. Uh, not anymore either. Brandon Lux Karanagam? Yeah. Uh, Edgar Ortiz? Yeah. Anthony Patron? Theodore Terpstra, uh, Christina Devekis, Nishan Patel, Alejandro Perez, Julie Chen, Carlos Lopez, Gayatri Buba, Dan Bird, Josh Essek, Noman Mumba, Jake Broccolo, Shabazz Khan, Casey Shu, and Chris Del Porta, Emma Price, and I think that's it. Sorry that wasn't alphabetical. We're getting an alphabetical one just as soon as we can. Um, yep, that's for you. And so next we move into public comment. Is there anybody who would like to be recognized for public comment? Seeing none, we move into approval of the minutes. Um, now, we don't have, and this might be confusing for some of the new members, we don't have our minutes available yet because we're getting an actual person for our office uh, that will make sure the minutes are updated and all that. Um, so by unanimous consent, which means nobody has an objection or a problem with this, um, I will be tabling the minutes uh, until the next set. Uh, is that okay, unanimous consent? So ordered. Um, and so next we move into an act concerning funding for American Red Cross Club. Uh, Senators Bird and uh, Perez. And the legislation is in the email. Please signify by saying aye. 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 
all those extensions. It clearly passes. Uh, all right, next we move into an act concerning the fall 2014 budget. Uh, Chair uh, Comptroller Rana. Concerning the fall 2014 budget of the undergraduate student government. Whereas the undergraduate student government is charged with passing a budget each semester under its constitution, therefore be it resolved the undergraduate student government adopts a proposed budget presented by Comptroller Rama. Therefore be it further resolved the undergraduate student government has the ability to update or amend the budget at a later date if necessary. So that's the act. And then just to kind of go through the budget breakdown a little bit so that if anyone has questions, we can kind of answer them. Up here highlighted is the uh, student fees for one semester. So we have approximately 1,600, 16,000 students on campus, and each of them are paying $45 as their student fee per semester. So that's how we get this 73, 733 number. And then this 708 number is the rollover from the previous semesters. So our total revenue for our first semester is about 1.4 million. Outside of that, we have then, so that's our revenue. And then our expenses, you see that uh, our student services, 5,000, development, app affairs, external funding. So funding's number, of course, is going to be big because this is all the allocated funds to student groups on campus, as well as appeals, as well as legislative request funding, or legislative request numbers for the duration of the semester. Reserves of 70,000 that we've always had consistently for the past few years. And exactly, you see that number is big, but I'll get to that breakdown as well. So send us 2,000 that we have for administrative use. Community outreach, we always do 50% of, 50 of their community outreach all breaks, we pay for. So that's where we get this 40,000 from. Area council, you're given about $2 per student to be able to run area council events on campus. And consistently, we've seen that, you know, they use about 20,000, 20, so that's about you know, almost 10,000 students worth of activities that will be funded for. USG General, that number seems high because that has to do with our uh, office breakdown. I'll get to that as well. And then Guard Dogs will also get to, so. Represent, uh, I mean, set, Kevin, you set this out right after. Um, I can, yes. I'll be sending this out because I didn't receive yeah. it until very recently ago. So that has a whole breakdown on it. And I guess the ones that would mainly have the questions, you know, the committees themselves submitted their budgets and you have those numbers. And then the main ones that you might have concerns about are USG General and Exec. So you know you see wages right here, USG General is broken down into wages, hardware, furniture, and office operations. So office operations includes all the rentals and fees that we pay. You know, that goes from all the things that we order, you know, you know administrative little, little things like you know, paper, rental copy, rentals for copiers and things of that nature. We have furniture, we have that allocated because we're still thinking about you know, doing our space reallocation within our office. Hardware and computers, once again, this is, you know, something that chief of staff has, our chief of staff has been working on in the recent year, in recent months, just trying to make sure that, you know, we update our servers and everything. And then wages, this includes students, non-students. As we know, we added a new front office or front desk employee, so, you know, our wages are also included in this, which is why the number was increased a little bit. Now, the exact amount goes over storage facilities. So we're gonna be revisiting Depot Campus to try and you know, work on getting our, work on getting space out there for student groups to be able to you know, put their items there, you know, much larger items that you know, can't necessarily be housed in dorms or you know, housed in apartments or anything of that nature so that there's more space. The uh, 7,000 for end of semester banquet for us to be able to you know, have a more rewarding experience. Travel miscellaneous in terms of anything that you know, requires us to maybe have to travel outside of, you know, external's own budget for transportation. This might be used for, like, you know, going to the Capitol for other things. Then, you know, we still have our New York Times publication. And then, you know, 
this last 46,000 you know, we have towards catering, orientation, events throughout the entire semester, as well as you know, payments for any type of initiatives that exec takes on, or if there's any payments, or if there's any need for reallocation of funds to any of our committees. You know, right now the committee submitted their budgets, but that's, that's subject to change. So it's possible that they might need more funds, and then from this exec budget, we'll be able to transfer those funds. So those are the breakdowns. And then at the bottom, you'll see that our total expenses are about 1.3 million. So ideally, we would want these numbers to get used up, so that you know we can exhaust, we can start reducing our our surplus, and hopefully try and get our balance closer closer to zero. Okay. Is there a motion to enact this uh, an act concerning fall 2014 budget? Uh, motion by Senator Byrd, second by Senator Bravo. Uh, are there any questions regarding uh, the 2014 budget? Seeing none, we move into debate. Is there any debate regarding uh, the 2014 budget? Seeing none, we move into a vote. Uh, all those in favor of enacting an act concerning fall 2014 budget, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, opposed, please signify by saying nay. Abstentions. Clearly passes. <laughs> Next, we move into reports of the executive uh, and the report of the president, President Price. Uh, feel free to come to me. Uh, 
The Provost spoke about making the faculty evaluation forms that you do at the end of your courses, making them mandatory to receive your grades. He said that you'd be working with us on that. Um, I know that might sound like a bit of a pain that you have to then go and fill a form, but um, what that would do is he would then be able to see um, basically which professors were kind of falling through the cracks and he would then send an email out to them and say, listen, you're gonna have to change or you know, we'll make changes. Um, so I think that makes students realize that their feedback is really actually taken into account when Troy will uh, listen and then he'll encourage the ones that get good, um, good reports. So for University Senate, I have some appointments to make. Um, I would like to appoint, so we get traditionally five undergraduates on it. Uh, USU president is one, three undergrads from stores, and then one from the regional campuses. So I'm going to be appointing the three undergrads from stores today. So that those would be um, Brandon Lutzko and Nigam, Colin Ng, and Eliza Conrad. You'd be nominees except their nomination. Okay. Uh, are there any questions regarding these nominations? Seeing none, is there any debate regarding these nominees? Seeing none, we move into a vote. All those in favor of approving the uh, President's appointments for the University Senate, uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Barely passes. <laughs> Services and 
Um, and um, uh, if you haven't already heard, they are going to be changing the library hours back to 2 a.m., um, which I think is a really, um, a really nice um, trail to feedback loop, and they really were listening to us um, when we went and said, like, listen, some students are really upset about this. So the library will stay open. It, it won't be until mid-October or so, until midterms come around, but um, Sunday through Thursday it will be until 2 a.m. Um, and Tim, sorry, you're going to comment more on that. Um, and um, we are working on keeping that relation with um, with the library, so that's why Rome is going to be sitting on that committee. Um, and finally, I'm sorry, I have so many nominations to do today. Um, there are two ad hocs that are going to be established. One is Guard Dogs. Um, the Guard Dogs ad hoc is going to be involved with writing policy. If you're interested in that, speak to um, Eliza, who I'm going to nominate to be chair. Um, I think she's going to do well. She served on the Guard Dogs uh, committee last year, and um, uh, we've already gone over goals and uh, some of the things that they're going to be working on. So um, I would like to no nominate Eliza Conrad to chair the Guard Dogs ad hoc. Does the nominee accept? All right, are there any questions regarding the nomination? Seeing none, is there any debate regarding this nomination? Seeing none, we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving Eliza Conrad as uh, chair of the Bar Dogs Ad Hoc Committee, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Abstentions? to the USG website and go to the bottom 
bottom to the webmaster login, you can log in with your NetID. And then on the left, there's like a part where it says profile, and you can put your hours and stuff on there. So you should all do that. It will be really helpful. And that's it. Are there any questions for the acting vice president? Yeah. Who should we talk to about Um, Talk to me or just Justin. Justin, yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions for the Vice President? Seeing none, we move into a report of the Comptroller, Comptroller Rama. Just a couple of things, just because a lot of it's already been covered. So I've been working kind of on some of the guard dog initiatives by uh, contacting some of the old applicants for their executive positions. So I've been working kind of with Eliza now, who's gonna be chairing that as you all know now. So uh, we will be having our first meeting with some of these prospective members, as well as anyone else who's interested at around 7.15. That's probably gonna be a little bit right after Act Affairs has their meeting. So anyone interested will be in the uh, SOC conference room for that. And, uh, just one thing to know about guard dogs right now that a lot of the work that we're gonna be doing is gonna be more policy driven because it has, there's a little bit more criteria that we have to fulfill before we'll be fully operative again. So these meetings, these are, uh, this committee is gonna be you know, kind of more driven towards that being sure that we have those policies and we have all those requirements fully you know, fulfilled. The other thing is that uh, still anyone who's interested in uh, Deputy Comptroller, just contact me and we can you know, try and set something up so you gauge your interest and everything. You know, we'll let the new senators also know that next, at our next Senate, I'll talk about that as well. And the last thing is that uh, we have set the budget deadlines for spring 2014, and the uh, funding board chair will probably tell you a little bit more about that in her report. That's it. Are there any questions for the Comptroller? Seeing none, we move into a report of the Chief of Staff. It's the Chief of Staff here. All right, the Chief of Staff is not here. Uh, so we are moving directly into the report of the legislature, which is me.
Price had just made for university senate committees. I would recommend there are a number of those that are still unfilled. Speak to her about those because they're a great way to have direct choice and uh, a direct say over things that happen in the university. So I would advocate or stress to everybody that you should try to get involved with those committees. Um, other than that, just with elections, there are more contested seats. Uh, this election than we've had uh, in, I would estimate, any time ever before, uh, a lot of them residential, and so it's a really, really great thing for USG to be attracting the amount of talent that we're about to have, um, and we will have up to, I believe, 57 members of the Senate after this election, so that's huge for us. Um, and, yeah, we don't have to also, just so everybody knows, we don't have to clap after everything. That's not a necessary thing that we do. It just, we did it once and then everyone was like, hey, this is cool. We don't have to do that every time. If we just have, like, up here, once I go and sit down, please don't clap because it's completely unnecessary. Um, and other than that, are there any questions for me? Yes, in the future, I apologize for that uh, the budget was not sent to you beforehand, as well as the legislation. Um, with the budget, it was still being edited right up to the time, and with the legislation, that was just my fault on that, I apologize. But in the future, um, all of that will be sent to you in advance. I'll yes? Sunday's time is for Senators 2.30 to 4.30. Um, and then any potential committee members, and I would mention this to any committee members that you know, anybody who's uh, joining a committee but not interested in joining the Senate is invited for 3.30 to 4.30 um, because we'll be learning, we'll be going over a lot of Senate-related things for that first hour. Are there any other questions? No, wonderful, thank you. Psychology. I was really hoping you'd clap for me. Uh, so glad I glad I got that. Um, all right. Next, we move into the report of the judiciary. Uh, Chief Justice Blumen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so a few things. 
Um, the academic affairs committee will be looking for two vice chairs this year. One will be for events and the other for advocacy. And then I want to talk about uh, the online petition that's going around regarding the revamping of student admin. Um, if you guys saw on Facebook over last week, really over the last two weeks, there's a petition going around, and I found the author of this petition, Alexander Lawton, and he came to our community meeting. Uh, I commended him for his passion for the issue, but I gave him, also gave him sound criticism and uh, suggestions, mainly not just we, we should go beyond the petition, but really go to our constituents and ask what exactly is wrong with student admin. Uh, the library, this is a hot topic this week. Uh, like President Price had said already, uh, we will be going back to 2 a.m. closing sometime in October. However, that I, is what I popped in the meeting, it might go back down to 12 once a 24 7 study space has been expanded. Um, there are talks of using the current library staff lounge as an extension for the study space that we have now for 24 7 use. They, they will be converting the uh, staff lounge into a space that's more conducive for studying. Uh, more details will come out eventually, but if you guys want more specific information, please approach me and the president. Uh, and I just want to point out that the dialogue with the vice provost with, uh, for the for university libraries is really very helpful, and we would like to continue this, and I have personally invited them to our academic affairs meetings. And uh, also, the pre president, president Price mentioned the regional campus representative to the University Senate. As someone who is from a regional campus, I took the initiative to ask the presidents across the state for their recommendations. Um, I have contacted presidents Dudanowitz, Udo Ocon, uh, Perez, and Perez, and um, Nostri. They will be sending three recommendations, hopefully by next week, and we will have a name by the beginning of pockets of next week. I have stressed that uh, their recommendation the recommended students should be heavily, um, not, not necessarily heavily involved, but very passionate about the university, and that they can uh, have transportation to the university, to, to this campus, and proper scheduling. It is very tough for regional campus students to make it up to stores. And Are there any questions for the chairperson? Yes. Brandon Love, Scare Knight. He is planning on submitting it to the proper administration personnel. However, he hasn't even laid out a proper, but he never mentioned a strict plan. And I just want to mention that he had about 400 signatures last Thursday. I don't know if it's still ongoing to this day. I think his goal was 1,000. Are there any other questions for the chairperson? Seeing none, we move into the report of External Affairs Committee. Um, Chairperson uh, Kubler. Got it for a second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to start by thanking everyone who signed up to volunteer with Celebrate Mansfield. Um, the town is really excited about everyone who's already signed up. And um, I'm going to just send out another reminder email in case anybody didn't get a chance to uh, sign up with, uh, through the first email. Uh, once again, uh, Celebrate Mansfield will be September 21st. It's a Sunday. Um, the actual festival is 12 to 4, and they're looking for volunteers all day from 9 to 6. Um, this week in external, we decided what the theme of our booth would be, or what the activity of our booth would be, and we're going to have a board uh, that where members of the town can write down what they love about living in a college town, and a spot where kids can paint what they love about living in a college town or draw on the board. Um, Yesterday was Town Gown, uh, which is the Town University Relations meeting, uh, which I attended, and uh, the most important piece of information that came out of that is that there will be a ballot initiative voting on the Four Corners Project, um, which is down 195 from, uh, down 195 from campus, and um, we will be discussing tabling for that initiative so people know it's on the ballot um, and external this week. Um, I also met with the mayor of Mansfield this morning, and we just discussed ideas on how we can strengthen our relationship and make sure that we we're on the same page when it came to um, what's going on this year in the town. I will be putting out a call for two vice chairs for town and state affairs, 
and a national liaison, the national liaison position that's going to be formed after the new Senate is formed. And then the last thing is just the, uh, an external we discussed uh, working on a gubernatorial debate, and we kind of uh, got the ball rolling on that, and uh, the administration is having a gubernatorial debate, so um, <clears throat> if there's anything you want done, start talking about it in your committee, and maybe the administration will pick it up for you. Um, <laughs> So uh, what we're doing now, it's actually, it's actually a good thing that they're already, they have all the logistics figured out, so what we're working on now is partnering with them, uh, and seeing if students can ask questions, if we can co-sponsor it. That's still sort of up in the air, but we're also talking about seeing if members of the USG can meet with the candidates either before or after the debate. So I'll have more details on that as that conversation goes on, but I'm in conversation, and, and uh, President Price and I spoke on the phone today with uh, Gail Garber, which is a university government relations person. Are there any questions for the chairperson? Uh, Senator Elvestre Brown? Electric Brown. Electric Brown. You are recognized. <laughs> the volunteering? Okay. The first one went out a while ago. It seems like we always seem to. I'm going to stop mentioning the emails during my report at them because there's why seems to be an issue with it there. Um, I'll, I'll send another one, you'll see in the next couple of days. And if, if, uh, I'll, I'll send you a personal email, seeing if you got it, and we'll, we'll make sure that you're on the list. Are there any other questions for the chairperson? Seeing none, we move into report of the funding board, Chairperson Johnny.
um, to get a lot of different opinions on campus culture. Um, with that being said, my meeting room will change soon, so if anybody's interested in joining, uh, hopefully there's another room upstairs I'm going to try to get. It will stay Mondays at 6.30 though. That is it. Are there any questions for the chairperson? Seeing none, we move into a report of Student Services Committee. Chairperson Hines. Hello. Um, so this week, my committee um, did a few things. We decided that we're still going to be working on the basketball tickets and the black market. Um, so that's good. And we also brainstormed more. Um, so we have was pretty much set up for us. Um, I had a meeting with the Dean of Students on Tuesday, yesterday, which went really well. Um, I'm excited to work with her, and she'll be a big help for our organization in general. Um, and then I'm meeting with Transportation Services on Monday to talk about changes and acts, because we talked about that in my committee. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Are there any questions for the chairperson? Uh, Senator Fiedler. There. Um, I'm just curious, is the basketball tickets and black market, as you put it, this um, conversation we're having here, whatever committee is going to be formatted that, um, is that also going to be, be dealing with football tickets and the recent change to the online system? So, yeah, a little bit. So, what we're looking at right now is um, why the fee for the football tickets to transfer a ticket is um, the $5 for the transfer and then another $2 to print. Um, and also how that would, how that's going to trans transfer over if it does transfer over for basketball tickets. Um, athletics and the one card office has not said yes or no on whether or not that system will be in place for basketball tickets yet, as far as I know. Are there any other questions for the chairperson? Seeing none, uh, we would move into unfinished business, but we don't have any of that. Uh, nor do we have new business because I put the budget allocations in the wrong place on the agenda, so we're going to not have that today. Um, is there anybody who would like to be recognized for discussion? Seeing none, are there any announcements? Seeing none, we are, what time is it? 7.32, we adjourn at 7.32. It's normally way more exciting than this, I promise, I swear to God.